Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Let's stand for prayer, please. Lord God of heaven and earth, we praise you and we bless you tonight, Father. And we thank you again, Lord, for the privilege of being in your house tonight, Lord. Lord, we look for you tonight. Come, Holy Spirit of the living God. Come tonight and move among your people. Oh, Lord, we need you. We need you. Each one here needs you, Lord God, whether they know they need you or not, Father. Come and move among us tonight, Lord God. Be in each part of the service, in the singing, the praying. Oh, Lord God, in the message tonight, Lord, let your anointing be upon Brother Jerome. Let your anointing be on Brother Ledger as he brings the singing tonight, Lord God. And we ask all this as always in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just a couple things for Brother Ledger comes forward. One is that I talked to Brother Wooten this afternoon, and he, he, the last thing he told me was, will you please tell everybody there? He said, please tell them hello for me, and then I miss everybody. So and he was really sincere about that. So the other thing is that if you haven't noticed, you might want to look at the chore sheet because we've gone back to the way we used to be a few years ago when we had less people here, and that was when you had a chore, you had it for the whole week. So because of the shortage of people now, we've gone back to the old system. If you have a chore and you're on the chore sheet, it's for the whole week. So if you haven't looked at it today, you might want to take a look at it. All right. Well, the ledger is going to come forward and lead us in song. Amen. Well, it's wonderful how the old hymns can just help us when we really don't feel like it. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. Let's sing um, 308 to start with. 308. 308. Very few of the uh, contemporary Christian songs are are in my book, but this is one of them I like. Come, Holy Spirit, we need Thee. Amen. Let's start with the chorus. Come, Holy Spirit, I need You. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your own gentle way. Come as a wisdom to children. Come as a new sight to the blind. Come, Lord, as strength to my weakness. Take me, soul, body, and mind. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your own gentle way. Come as a rest to the weary. Come as a balm to the soul. Come as a dew to my dryness, fill me with joy evermore. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your own gentle. Come like a spring in the desert, come to the weary of soul. Oh, let your sweet healing power touch me and make me whole. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your own gentleness. 
missing 107. 107. And when you're singing this song, just note how many times you sing, God will take care of you. <laughs> Be not dismayed, whatever betide, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you through days of toil. God will take care of you. When dangers fears your path assail, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He God will take care of you. All you may need, He will provide. God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. God just so grateful to the Lord tonight for all he does for me. You know, I get up every morning and I've got the Lord the first thing and I've got him all through the day. I know he's going to be with me because I started my day with him. It's the first thing I think of as soon as I get up, I spend time with him and I, I read my Bible and do devotions and I put on praise and worship music and that gets my day going. I get it done on the right foot with the Lord and for me that's the only way. It's the only way uh, I want it to be because I'm very satisfied with it and I'm very happy and grateful to the Lord and I'm grateful to the Lord for all the peace he's brought us during this time, you know, with the virus, with keeping his hand upon us, with being short with people and chores and everybody's been pitching in and doing more than they usually do or have to do and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for all the guys that work in the kitchen that just seem to just take right over and do whatever is needed in this time. And I'm, I know Bob is grateful for his security, for all they do, and for Daniel and all the people that help him with Rodney. And I'm grateful to all the guys here that are doing the chores that have to be done, you know. 
it's not just that some people have to make things happen to make this mission go, but it's everybody here has to do their part. You know, whether it's, it's cleaning up the, the porch or emptying the trash or sweeping the floor or doing dishes and pots and pans. And it just takes a lot for this mission to be the mission God created it to be and, and the mission God keeps it to be. So I'm grateful tonight for the Lord's presence here at the mission. Yes. And in my life. Does anybody have a, a press and testimony tonight or a current praise report? We want to go to prayer. We always have lots to pray for. We want to pray for Brother Jerome as he brings a message tonight. We want to continue to pray for uh, the ledgers and all that they need prayer for. We want to pray for Brother Wooten. Uh, he's there with his family. He'll be coming back. He said he thinks he'll start back Monday. He'll be back Tuesday night. And for the time there with his family, let's pray that the Lord continue to bless that time and encourage each one of them, you know. It's a special time for him. He doesn't get to see his family very often anymore. And uh, it's hard. He, he has another house besides the house he stays in. He has a house and he stays with his daughter. But he told me he said he couldn't even go over to the house. And that's because of the memories of Sister Wooten. So, you know, even after this time, you know, let's pray for him. Pray for God to comfort him, heal him, encourage him. And, you know... He'll be anxious to get back and talk with everybody and get right back in the saddle, you know, being rested. So let's pray that he, the remainder of his time be good and that he has a safe trip home. I want to pray for... Yes. Yeah. yeah. Glenn and... Daniel lost their brother. He was only 45 in the last couple of days. So let's continue to pray for both of them and for their sister, too, who's there. Let the Lord comfort them and support them in this time. We want to ask the Lord continue to keep his hand upon us here at the mission and keep his hand on the mission. You know? Does anybody have a prayer request? 
me. Um, no politics and religion, I'm supposed to mix, but they passed a uh, bill to do another 1200, and it's going, I believe, in front of the Senate, the one that's right below the president, to see if they can pass the second one. They called the Heroes Act, and praying that the Lord will settle on the Republicans that are saying they're going to uh, pass against it, that they changed their mind. Anybody else? <clears throat> All right, let's stand for prayer. Brother Judd, will you lead us in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you again, Father, we thank you for your love and truth and grace and mercy. Amen. Father, we thank you so much, Jesus. We thank you so much for life. Father, this is Father, we are here. Father, this is the plan that is to develop in this world. Thank you, Jesus. Let us all just come to the understanding yes. of why we are here. There are so many other reasons that develop a mind and try to pull us to the left and to the right. And not that these things aren't important, but the most important thing in our lives is that we understand who you are, we understand where you came, we understand that you are God, you are our Savior, you are our Lord, and you came to set us free from sin. Help us to realize this, Father. Help us to want to turn away from our sins. Help us to bend our knees. Help us to love our brother. Help us to love our families. Help us to love you ourselves. Help us to just channel that energy and to realize that if we allow you to come into our lives, Father, you provide the love and the truth and the peace that this world cannot provide. Father, it hasn't for 100,000 years and never will. We see the things going on in the world, we see the fear, we see the breakdown, and we understand that only you can provide that love and that peace. So just help us realize that, Father, like I said again, help us to love each other, to spread the message of joy and hope of truth. Uh, touch Brother Jerome tonight in a powerful way, lift him up and anoint him as he brings a message. And Father, let's just uh, take care of each other and uh, love you first. We thank you for your mercy. Without it, we are dust. And we thank you for your grace, your providence, and your blessings. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Right, the ushers are coming forward and we'll take the evening offering, which goes towards Latin American Ministries for the work in Guatemala. Father, thank you for coming to our house. Please move amongst us. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, soothe our souls, relieve our tensions, help us help others with tonight's donation. Let everyone be deep in their pockets if they can't afford it, because the money goes through you to people that really need it. One dollar is often worth as much as 20 or 25 dollars, and we understand that. Everyone else does. Once again, thank you for our church, our mission, and our wonderful <clears throat> men and givers. I ask these things in your Son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Are you Come up with one more song for us. All right. Let's 
Let's turn to 442. 442. I'm so glad for the blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus loves us, and I appreciate that. But I also appreciate how the Holy Spirit can witness with our spirit that we are a son of God. Amen. Amen. 442. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Brother Ledger, and thank you all for your, your great singing without a piano tonight. <laughs> it's, a, it's different, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. All right, it's time to open up our hearts and see what the Lord has for each one of us through Brother Jerome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good evening. It is always so nice to be called upon to to share the word of God and uh, what an awesome responsibility uh, that is and uh, and I still tremble at the thought sometimes to to stand before God's people and to and to share what God has laid upon my heart and uh, and knowing all the time how unworthy I am to be standing before God's people. And, uh, but God has called us all to do something for the furtherance of his kingdom. And I just availed myself, and this is what God chose for me to do. And uh, I'm thankful and grateful for that. And, uh, and I, I, I love him dearly tonight. And, and, and that is the subject I want to speak on tonight briefly. Love. Love. Oftentimes we, we say one to another that we love each other. But do you really love each other? <laughs> do you really love each other? 
God loves us. His word tells us that. And uh, if we are to love one another, then we must be born of God. The way I read my Bible. That's the way I read my Bible. Aside from God, we can only love based on our humanity. And our humanity tells us our love is conditional. You turn your back on me, I'm not going to love you anymore. But God's love is unconditional. God loves unconditional. No matter how often and how far we fall away from God, God's love doesn't change. He still has that love for us. He doesn't appreciate what we do, but his love for us never changes, never changes. He's always there to draw us to Jesus and to, to get us right in his eyes. So I just want to take a couple minutes tonight and, and speak on love. And if you, if you go to in the back of your Bibles in the concordance and look up the word love or look up the word charity... You can find tons and tons and tons of scripture dealing with love and what it means to love. And uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 has some wonderful verses concerning love. But I want to speak to you tonight from the book of uh, 1 John tonight. The book of 1 John. Because you don't have to stand right now. John spoke about love quite a bit. And, and the apostle John was known as the disciple that Jesus loved. And John knew early on what love meant. John knew early on if he was going to know love, if he was going to be able to, to communicate love, then he needed to be close to the source of love. And Jesus is that source of love. When I, when, I, when I picture the Apostle John, I picture John with his head laying in the breast of Jesus. Just laying in the breast of Jesus. Just, just soaking in. Just soaking in that love that Jesus wanted to show. That love that Jesus wanted to give. And I think that's why the Holy Spirit tasked John with teaching us what love was all about. Uh, in 1 John chapter 3, um, verse 11, it says, For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. This is a message that we heard from the beginning. That we should love one another. And now my, my uh, passage of scripture tonight is coming from 1 John chapter 4. And I'm going to start at verse 7 and end at verse 14. You may stand for the reading of God's word. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is is love. And this was manifested the love of God towards us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world. And that we might love through him. Herein is love. Not that we loved God but that he loved us. And sent his son. To be the propitiation for our sins. To be a substitute for our sins. 
news. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Praise God. Praise God. God sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. And I want each and every one of you to know tonight, God sent his son to save you. Jesus came and died to save you. Blessed Father, we love thee this evening. We thank thee for thy faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for thy blessed son, Christ Jesus. And Father God, we're so grateful and thankful for this opportunity that you've granted us one more time, Lord. And we invite thy spirit tonight, Lord, just to come and, and sit with us for a few moments tonight, Lord. Blessing each and every one of us, Lord, blessing the thoughts of our minds and the words of our mouths, that all that's said and done is pleasing unto thee. And for all that you do this night, we give thee the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So if you, would, if you would go to uh, 1 John chapter 4 and, and, and read that particular chapter for yourself, you will find there are two principal subjects that is discussed in uh, chapter 4. It, you first find out about the spirit of truth, and that is spoken in verse 2. And then when you go down to verse 3, John tells you about the spirit of error or the Antichrist. The Antichrist. But what I want to speak to you tonight concerning is the, the source of love, the duty of love, the power of love, and the influence of love. And, and like I said earlier, this is a favorite subject with the Apostle John, known as the disciple Jesus loved. So if I would ask you tonight, what is the greatest commandment in the law? I think a majority of you would say loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself. Love is part of God's nature. God is spirit. God is light. God is faithful and just. God is good. But above all, God is love. From all eternity, the Trinity by nature is perfect love. Love has its origin in God. And everyone, everyone who has true love is born of God. When we are born of God, our knowledge, our faith in God's love is not only established, but through the feeding of his word and the faithful obedience, our love and time will grow. It will mature. It will thrive. And in that, it makes us more and more like God. The world saw the invisible God. But Jerome, we just read that no man has seen God. But the Spirit of God dwelled in Jesus. Jesus is the only one that revealed God. Jesus did not reveal a physical rep representation of God, but Jesus revealed the Spirit of God. Jesus revealed the love of God. 
Jesus revealed the compassion of God. Jesus revealed those attributes that we are to take on ourselves once we come to Jesus. Amen. That's what Jesus revealed to man. And no man has seen God. But Jesus revealed God's nature. God's nature. What a vast contrast than humanity's nature and God's nature. Just think about it. Adam Adam knew no sin, was the closest, the closest thing to God on this planet. He knew no sin. Sin was not on the planet, but it was in the world, it was in the airwaves. It was there. Because when Lucifer left heaven, but Jesus came to reveal the nature of God in a, in a, in a large, large part of God's nature is love. Based on the truth of what John affirms in John 3 verse 8, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And that tells us God is love. Hatred, envy, wrath, malice, all have their source in something other than God. He neither originates them, nor commends them, nor approves them. Christians not only have the capacity, but the command to share the love that we have received from God with one another. Once we were born again, once we received that love from God, it became our duty. It became our duty to share that love with others. That is a command. That is a command. Hear me now. Hear me now. That is the greatest evidence. That is the greatest evidence that you are a child of God. That you can share that love. That love. Because it is that love that dwelleth in you. It is that love that dwelleth in you. It is that love now that, that desires, that desires to become a greater part of your nature. God is love. That is God's nature. God is love. So when we come to God, we receive his love. With the indwelling of the Spirit of God in us, then God's love should transform, should transform our nature. It's transforming. That's the essence. That's the essence of it all. To transform us. To get us out of our humanity and to allow us to receive all heavenly blessings. That's the only way that we're able. That is the only way that we have the capacity to do what God desires of us to do. That we're indwelled. With his love. The second point. 
Love is a part of God. God's gift of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus chose to atone for humanity's sins. Jesus paved the way for lost humanity to be reconciled with the holy God. Romans 10 and 9 tells us that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 2 Corinthians 5, 20 and 21 tells us, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The scripture tells us we ought to love one another. It shows the best evidence that God dwells in us. The third point, God continues to show his love towards us. The unconditional love of God is not just to be that which constitutes God's eternal nature. We know that's God's eternal nature, love. But God's love is to be celebrated as an ongoing, gracious gift of God. God's love to us is a gift. How can that be? God gave us Jesus. Jesus is God's gift of love to us. That is the gift of love. God's love is not present one day and, and gone the next. Ephesians 1 and 3 tells us, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. The love of God will bestow upon you all, all spiritual blessings. All. Though we have not seen God, but by loving each other, we not only experience the presence of God, and in God's presence, that leaves a, a profound, unshakable testimony to the lost and to the fallen. A profound, an unshakable testimony. A lot of us right now cannot understand the love that God has for us. We don't fully understand it. And that's okay. That's okay. There's a lot of things in God's word I don't understand. But I do know that the word of God tells me, for God so loved, for God so loved that he gave. <laughs> I understand that. God loved me so much that he gave Jesus, his own begotten son, that I, <laughs> that I, might believe and if I do believe he will grant me eternal life I do understand that for God so loved that he gave so what does that say to us I've come to Jesus 
I can make that same proclamation. For I so love the world that I gave. What am I giving? The love that Jesus gave to me. I'm sharing what Jesus gave to me. Peter told the, told the blind man, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give freely. What was Peter saying? What God has given me, I give to you. We are to share. We are to share. God didn't love me just for me to love him. How can I be a lighthouse? Hi, or how can I be that candle? How can I be the salt of the world? If I'm not out, Sharing. The Bible. The Bible is about sharing. Jesus chose 12 disciples to go out and share. The Spirit of God inspired earthly men to pen the words of God. Why? So the words of God can be shared. All the things that Jesus taught his disciples, they weren't only for them. Jesus prepared them and trained them to go forth. Jesus sent them out to the uttermost parts of the world to share God's love. Love's assurance. We sang the song tonight, Blessed Assurance. But what is love's assurance? Living. Living in God and living in love. You can't separate love from God. They're meshed. They're knitted together. You're inseparable. I'm going to conclude with this. Our love for God is to be perfected in our love for one another. While it is in our human nature to love those who love us, the mark of a true believer is their ability to unconditionally love one another. For John hated hatred or indifference towards another. And that is evidence that God's unconditional love has not entered one's own heart. And therefore, one is not a Christian. If you can't love someone unconditionally, I could presuppose that the love of God has not entered your heart. God loves us unconditionally. And we can put markers on someone. If you don't do this, I won't love you. No. So what is this passage of scripture telling us tonight? This passage of scripture tells us, yeah, there may be some disagreements. But that doesn't mean that you're not saved. But hating and demonizing one another... That's a warning that God's love may not have entered in. It may not have entered in. God's love should be manifested if you call yourself a child of God. If God's love isn't being manifested, maybe you need to check yourself. So let this be our prayer.
that God will teach us how to rightly, rightly love one another. To rightly love one another. Not just love me because you want something from me. Don't love me to use me. Don't love me so you can look good, feel good about yourself. Love me because you love me. Praise God. Love me because you love me. No matter my fault. And we all have them. That should love you. That should, you should love me even more. Because now you know I'm not perfect. Now you know. Now you know. So there shouldn't be any pedestals between us. The only thing that should connect us is the love for one another. Just the love for one another. That was the essence of Jesus telling his disciples, the Father and I are one. And now Jesus is saying, now you and I can become one through love. Love. love is the essence. Love is the glue that knit everything together. It was love that sent Jesus to earth. It was love that he surrendered his life. It was love that raised him from the grave. It was love that ascended him back into heaven. It is love that having him sit at the right hand of the Father. It is love that he's going to come back again. Amen. It is love that we shall see him face to face. It is love. It's love. I thank you. Thank you for listening tonight, and, uh, and I just hope for, for a little while that you would take some time and, uh, and read 1 John 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Take some time. Do a word study on charity. Do a word study on love. And, and see how love should impact us. See how love should carry us through. Love. Love. Overlooks a lot of flaws. Overlooks a lot of differences. It is that glue that brings people together. It is that glue that brings people together. It is binding. It is binding. Once again, I say, I say thank you, and uh, may the love and the peace of God be with you. You're dismissed. <laughs>